Hey, what's up traders? This is Trader Tim from over at eminimine.com doing a Monday market analysis video for the 8th of June 2020 and lots of good stuff to talk about today. I wanted to uh, start with the some day trades from the uh, ES here. We'll get to some swing trades and a whole host of other good stuff. So let's just um, let's dive right in. So the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, typically the process that we use for entering trade is to draw up um, a retracement on the five minute or the 15 minute chart and then come over to the 512 and then look for a micro setup uh, a smaller setup to place your entry well with the volatility dropping um, we can draw some of these setups here and notice that the distance between the 50 and the 618 on the five minute or the 15 minute chart is actually you know, getting pretty small. And so you'll see that with lower volatility situations where you, know, you can get away with entering on the five or 15 minute and have a two point stop and have that stop you know, in some cases when volatility shrinks enough, be outside of the 618. So as the VIX continues to drop, just keep that in mind. Uh, we've been kind of dropping here for the last month, two months, and getting into some pretty good uh, low territory in the VIX. So keep that in mind with higher volatility situations. You know, it's more advantageous to just enter on the 512 waiting for you know, entering on the first setup that occurs. So here's this 50% and then just drawing the first micro setup that pulls back to its 50%. And then the important thing is to try and trail your way to the larger five or 15 minute negative 23. That's something that a lot of the, you know, amateur and newer traders um, I see fail on is you know, you're, you're going through this trouble to get into the trade and you're identifying the support level on the larger time frame. You need to, you know, give it some wiggle room, trail that next 618 and stay in the trade, try and stay in, do your best to stay in to that uh, negative 23% target on the larger time frame. Because if you, you know, go through your trades and you look at, okay, what's my average winner compared to my average loser and you want to get you want to be shooting for somewhere around two and a half to one if you're at one to one if you're getting in your trade and then taking the whole thing off at two points you're you're just doing yourself a disservice because you then you need your you know winning percentage if you're at say one to one your winning percentage then at 50 percent or even 55 percent is just break even and so you know getting to 60 70 percent is certainly achievable, uh, but you're not going to have that every month. And so with a R multiple or a reward to risk that's closer to two and a half to one, you know, your winners are two and a half times your losers. That means that you can have a drawdown or a period where your winning percentage is 30 or 40 percent and still come out ahead. So if you, you know, go through and log, you know, 100, 200 trades over the last, you know, six months or so, and, you know, look at your average winner and your average loser, that are multiple, then also go through and look at what's your average trade. So if you just average all of your winners and losers, you know, what, what does that look like? That's your expectancy. And then that third thing that I mentioned, your, your drawdown, you know, look for what was your biggest peak to trough drawdown. And so if you have, you know, let's say your uh, biggest drawdown is uh, $1,500, well, you need to be able to withstand that drawdown with your account size. So as you scale up, if that's a $1,500 drawdown with um, two contracts, well, when you go to four contracts, you would expect that to be 3000 So, you know, if you've got a $50,000 account or a $100,000 account, you want to make sure that you're not trading too big. You know, you still want to keep your position sizing small so that you can withstand that drawdown and come out the other side. So uh, really do your best to try and hold on to those winning trades as long as you can. You know, you're, you're essentially rewarded by the length of time that you're able to stay in the winning trades. And 
you know, that's one of the reasons trailing your stop is so beneficial, but really trying to target the negative 23 of the five minute chart is going to, you know, help increase your average winner and then bring up that R multiple. So uh, the next thing I wanted to highlight is, you know, with retracements, we're, we're looking to trade with the trend. We've established, okay, here's a low for the morning and a high for the morning. Uh, we pull back and we're looking for that uptrend to continue. Great. Well, with the counter trend trades, it's helpful to utilize the nicey tick and look for high ticks that line up with highs and low ticks that line up with lows. So shorting at highs and, and buying at lows. Now, the first five minutes I always ignore because you get some you know, extreme spikes that aren't really very applicable. So you, know, you give the market 15 minutes to settle out and then we actually got our first high tick or relative high tick uh, here at six, um, you know, about 15 minutes after the bell, lined up with highs and it set up, broke a little swing low, set up in a nice little short. Um, you want to try and trail these reasonably, get, you know, you want to give them a reasonable amount of room. Um, trailing the full halfway back is great, especially when volatility is low, because, you know, the distance between where price is and where your stop is, is typically, you know, I don't like it to be more than five points away from my price. Like, I don't want to give up more than five points. So if price is down at 32.02, my stop is at 32.06. Uh, you know that's roughly four points. If you give it a little, a couple ticks of wiggle room outside the 61.8, that can help keep you in these trades longer, and uh, you know, so you're not just getting getting in and then getting out two points later. Um, you're you know, you're not always going to be able to trail nice and cleanly. Market's certainly going to tick you out from time to time, but uh, if you're by and large shooting for you know the other end of the range like if you're shorting at highs and targeting at lows you know keeping that in mind to try and trail it's always better i find to give yourself a little extra wiggle room on your stop side to catch that you know have the potential of catching that bigger winner so a couple things those to keep in mind now this week we've got a a fed meeting here on wednesday and typically the tuesday before the Fed meeting announcement on Wednesday is a slow day, and then the morning of the announcement is slow. Um, you know, the last Fed meeting was a little bit odd. We had um, more actionable Tuesday and Wednesday, but by and large, you know, our last 10, 12 years, the Tuesday, Wednesday are um, just not the greatest days to trade. So we will be doing a um, live trading session tomorrow morning, so you can tune in, ask questions. Uh, you know, we'll see what the market gives us, but I'm not expecting a whole lot. And then on uh, Friday, we've got rollover. So we'll be going to the September contract for the futures. And then the next Friday's expiration. So make sure next week, if you're trading on, you know, think or swim, you can just put backslash ES is going to pull up the front month. If you're trading on a different trade ladder as you are charts, just make sure that you're on the September contract next week uh, because the two, the June and the September will uh, be a little bit different in price, so so keep that in mind. Uh, then the last thing I want to go over are the swing trades. Um, I would say I'm cautiously bullish up here. If we look at the S&P, uh, you know we're beyond the negative 61.8. And when I do look at putting on short positions, like option positions on the the dailies, I like to do them at the close. I also like to you know exit profitable positions at the close. Uh, reason being, you're you sort of have the whole day to assess the candle and if it's a big bullish candle and you've been long you know closing out the position at the close or at least a portion of it if you got multiple contracts is good because if it moves sideways you're just going to lose that time decay and i like to enter at the close uh just in case we do get that um you know gap down and uh if i'm entering you know a short when the market here is going up then you you typically have a decline in volatility and so you can get it at a at a better price so that's just my experience um, or observations over the last uh, you know 10 12 years of uh, of doing the options like that but uh, as far as individuals you know I've got Amazon here 
above the high of this hammer. Uh, entry was in the 28th, and I took a little bit off below the low of the high bar. Uh, again, trying to keep, you know, maybe take a quarter or a third off. You want to try to keep as much on as you can. And then once you break above the swing high, then bring your stop up underneath that swing low and, uh, and keep it there. So then the next one I've got is... Uh, CDNS, same same setup, candle or a hammer, and enter on the uh, 28th above the uh, high of that candle. Took a little bit off when we when we pulled back, broke the low of the high bar, and then if we can make a new high, then I'll bring my stop up and uh, put it underneath that swing low. And then I've got a uh, one short. I always like to have one short if the market's really bullish, or one long if the market's really bearish, just in case uh, things turn around. Um, and this one, obviously, you know, S&P really strong today, uh, NASDAQ really strong, and then this one selling off. So just entered below the low of the high bar and then stop above uh, 60 there. A um, little bit of an uptrend, and so looking for it to uh, get some follow through and sell off uh, the next couple of days if we can. So if you have questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Again, tomorrow. Uh, could be a little bit of a sketchy day, so just be careful Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, but we will be doing a trading session. You can check that out, uh, eminimind.com slash VIP. I hope everyone has a great week, and I will talk to you soon.